Okay, folks, Bob here at Bob's Classic Cars and Parts. And we're going to do another in the series of trying to fix up these older cars and keep them on the road. Uh, this is a 2004 Mercury Sable, and it's got the uh, double overhead cam, 24-valve, of course. Uh, I think it's a 3.0 V6. We're going to put a valve cover gasket on it. Here it is. Uh, got one from Amazon. Haven't even opened the package up yet. So, uh... Well, I hope that's the right one. Sure think so. I think it is. The um, back valve cover is not leaking. Thank goodness. Uh, we put it up on a lift and no signs of it leaking, but the front one sure is. So uh, we're going to put the front one on it, which is a lot easier to get to. If you have to do a back one, this video is not going to be much help to you. Go ahead and put that up front. But if you need to do the front one, then we can hopefully help you here. Uh, let me uh, pause you here and I'll get the hood popped up okay so this is the valve cover right here so we got a wiring harness i think it just pops off yeah it just pops off hopefully it'll move out of the way uh breather hose or tube and the coil packs or the spark plug coil pack combination i don't believe i have to remove the spark plugs i think they'll pull through i hope so and uh there's some valve cover bolts that look like they're metric and this little plastic cover's got to come off Duratech V6. So we got a few little valve cover bolts down through here, right there, right there, across the top. There's two and two on the back, and then there's three right through here. That one's been replaced, it looks like, because it's a bolt, not a stud. So, all right, let me uh, see if I can get you set up on the tripod and we'll uh, start taking this apart. By the way, this should be the same procedure for the Taurus also, Ford Taurus. And I'm not sure how many years uh, Mercury Sable, this body style, I think it was around for a few years, 2002, right on up to about 2006 or seven or eight, somewhere along in there. But we did a video where we put headlights in it, we got brand new headlights in it. So we're gonna do the valve cover this video. Again, just trying to keep this vehicle on the road. Uh, it's got 136,000 miles on it. Not bad for 04, it runs like a champ. It's got plenty of power. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, you want to learn how to do this, hopefully we can help you out here. Okay, so there's the gasket that I bought. It's a Felpro. Like I said, I got that from Amazon. And it comes with, of course, two different gaskets. They are different. This one's got a raised up section, which I believe is the front one up toward the radiator. And this one's the back one toward the firewall. I'm pretty sure of that. And these little uh, O-rings, I guess that's for the coil packs. And this will be for the uh, where the bolts go in, I believe. A lot of times you can look at these that your old ones are not brittle or not hard. <clears throat> you don't need to replace these. That's up to you. Sometimes they can be a little difficult to get out. I haven't, I don't know, I should, shouldn't say that. On other engines, I've found them hard to get out. I haven't done this one yet. This is my first time on one of these engines. So I believe that's the gasket we're gonna need. Let's get started. Okay, folks, I ended up disconnecting this tube from right up here and all I had to do was just push on that take that right there and just push it down that little tab get you where I can see a little better and push down and it opens it up and it popped off no problem the reason I did that I couldn't get it to separate here pulled as hard as I could and it started to crack I don't know if you guys can see this little crack right here so uh, once we get the valve off, we can take a look at that, see if we can't put some lubricant on that and get that off easier. But for right now, I don't want to have to go to the Ford dealer and buy one of these pieces here for $30, whatever the heck it costs. Who knows? So we're okay right now. So we'll deal with the hose still being attached. And I put a little bit of tape over this opening here so it wouldn't anything get down in there and get it work its way into the intake. This here, I can just blow it out once we get the valve cover off. I'm not worried about it. And the reason I did that is there's a storm coming and I'm inside of a metal building. If it gets the lightning real bad, I'm with the band and go back in the house. Don't like being out here in this tin metal building and it's not lightning storms. All right, let me get these. I will mark these and I'm just gonna do it one, two, three with one being the farthest to the left, just like you're reading it left or right. And that way I get these I don't think they'll get mixed up, but just in case, because I don't know what's going to happen with the weather, and I got some other things going on. I may not be able to get back out here if something interrupts me for a few days. So I just mark everything so I know where it goes back. Okay, guys, so I got the coil packs out. Now, this one here, 
the rubber boots separated from the coil. So I'm gonna put that back in before, before I reinstall it. Don't like that at all. Hope I didn't damage that coil. But if it did, it did. But uh, what are you gonna do? You put them twisting, pulling, and it just pops loose. So the other ones weren't near as on there, near as tight. They were a lot easier to work with. Now, I got this cover piece off. And I'm assuming that's the timing belt for this kit, the camshafts on this side of the engine. And I'm guessing there's a timing chain probably on this side. Keeps it in tune with the crank. I'm not sure how these engines are built, but uh, I've always been fascinated by twin cam motors. They are a little more difficult to work on, in my opinion, than regular old, old school V8 wedges and inline sixes. But uh, anyway, enough about that. Uh, I don't think I've got to take the spark plugs out. We're going to try it without and see what happens. And I'll deal with that grommet later that boot for the uh, spark plug later. We'll get that out so it wants to get the valve cover off. Okay, next up is uh, 10 millimeter. I don't know if you guys can see. Get it. 10 millimeter long deep well, deep extension and a long deep, long extension and deep socket. There's, uh, what did I say, 12 of these bolts across the top and through the middle. So right here, there, there, and then all the way around the edge. And I got this harness loose. That's loose. The coil pack's loose. Uh, other than the sparking plugs, I think we're good to go. Let's see what happens. Okay, the valve cover is off. It pulled through this boot, so I still got to get this boot out. There it comes. That wasn't so bad. All right, cool. We can put that back together. And uh, you see where it's kind of been oozing out around the valve cover a little bit. See the dark spots, but... We're going to clean all that up and put the new gasket on it. You did not have to remove the plugs. I don't know if you can see, but they're still down in there. I know there's a glare, but there's a plug still in there. So you do not have to remove the plugs. I did have to take a little screwdriver and I was able to wedge. You can probably see my little mark there. Wedge this up in there and I tapped it with a uh, rubber mallet. Where's my rubber? Right here, rubber mallet. Got it to pop up a little bit. And then I put a bigger screwdriver in, then I finally went to the pry bar and got, got under it good with the pry bar and then just easily lifted it up, popped it over the, uh, the grommet for the uh, spark plug boot. So we're good to go there. So let's get this thing back together. Oh, here's the gas valve cover gas, your valve cover right here. And it doesn't look gummed up or anything. This was a good running engine. So uh, we'll put new, uh, a new gasket on here. Yeah, this one does have the curvature that, that I showed you. And this is the little rubber pieces that go around the bolts. They look okay, but I'm gonna try to replace these. They're booger to take off. Let me see if we can replace them. And it's the booger to put new ones in, I think, too, once you get them, once you get them put on the stud. They're kind of big. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, this is the new gasket. I checked to make sure it was correct. It is. Here's the old gasket laying right here. Took it off, it's just laying over top of my cluttered up parts washer. Uh, you can see where it was leaking right through here, how dark it is. Oil was kind of gummed up. So I'll get a scraper and scrape that clean. Sometimes you can use some lacquer thinner on a, on a rag and wipe it, get it clean. We'll get that nice and clean, reinsert the gasket. We need to uh, probably replace these as well. There's three of these. And uh, <clears throat> I've got the head clean already, pretty much couple little spots wouldn't hurt to touch up but sometimes you can take some lacquer thinner on a rag and wipe it and that'll help it out a little bit but let me get started on that okay so i bought this off of amazon it's a gasket scraper and uh it's supposed to be really helpful on stuff that's been baked on pretty good it's, it's good on cylinder heads and you don't want to cut deep scratches in the bottom of a cylinder head but if you drag it along carefully it'll it'll remove gasket pretty good so we're going to we're going to do it on this, and if I can get a, let me get a tripod and I'll show you how, how it does. All righty, let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, look at it coming off of there. Now this is not too terrible bad. But it is definitely getting it off. And that beats uh, beats them old-fashioned 
Glacials, I think. Here's a, here's a bad spot here. Let's see if I can get where you can see this a little better. Right here. Right there. Two of these, two different sizes. We're probably gonna have to get the locker center out, clean this up a little bit. Try to be careful, don't let it fall down inside the valve cover. And when you're doing the head, don't let it fall inside the engine. And if it does, don't panic. Try to get it out. It does happen from time to time. Don't panic. All right, so I think what I'm going to do now is uh have to go get some lacquer thinner. the reason i haven't had you on the tripod on the rest of it is i've been kind of stopping as i go because this is the first one of these i've done studying for a little bit and i've gotten on the internet twice just to verify some things and it was just to put you guys through all that and i didn't want a time lapse so I showed you the procedures before and after on all the bolts they had to take out. I think that was the right way to do it. Well, let me finish cleaning this up and uh, I'll get the gasket in it and I'll show you how I replace these. Okay, so I pulled out one of the seals and I installed the new seal. I was getting it out of the way. Oops, there we go. I got to mash that down a little better, but it's nothing to it they've got a little tab on them so you just lift up and pull them out i had to get the screwdriver to kind of pry up on them a little bit get them started but they just pull out now they've got a tab i'm gonna try to show you see that little tab right there right there you go and that goes to the top side or i should say the bottom to the outside towards the, that faces the cylinder head. So when you put the new one back in, see the tab, it needs to go straight down in. Like so, I can't do this with one hand. So let me cut you off. There we go, we got that one in. That one's in, probably wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of oil on it. And uh, yeah, that one's in. So let me get these put in and the valve cover's clean. Let me see if we can set the valve cover back down on there. We don't need these anymore. All right, I got the new valve cover gasket put on and you have to make sure you push it in the groove correctly. It's got, a, as you saw, it's got a groove in the valve cover. Push it down in there good. I don't use any silicone. You don't need silicone or any kind of glue or anything. Uh, these little O-rings, I noticed they kept wanting to curl back up and pop out. So I put some I put some motor oil on them, some sort of stuff I use here in the shop. And uh, so far to have it curled back up, I guess that was just from being in the packaging maybe. But they're seated in there good now. They haven't curled up lately. So while I was preparing for the last video, I noticed they curled up. What happened? They just kind of twisted, twisted back up out. So they seem to be okay. So I'm going to do a test fit. I'm going to just sit the valve cover down on there and then pull it right back off and just make sure everything stayed in place like it should. If it did, then we'll do the final assembly or the final set down. All righty. So I did a test fit, pulled it back off. Everything looked okay. So I set it back down and I started putting the bolts in. And uh, before I started putting the bolts in, though, I did check to see 
if these old rubber seals were good, and they still are good, stuck a screwdriver in there, very pliable. AR, in my opinion, maybe I don't know what I'm doing. I, it, getting these things off is a pain. Uh, so I don't know if that doesn't thread on there. It just slides on. So let me try one more thing. I may, I may take a pair of pliers if I can pull that whole piece off. But once you pull that piece off, it might be easier. But that's the bag of new ones. And they look fine. So I'm just hang on to those. And uh, they'll be there if we need them. But I don't think I'm going to use them. I'm going to stay with these. They seem to be fine. And there's they're pretty thick rubber and they're soft i think we'll be okay okay i got everything bolted down i got the tube reconnected there it's a piece of cake i decided not to mess with none of this because i break something uh, now we're going to put the coil packs back in uh, as far as the bolts uh the little rubber pieces have to fit down into the the hole in the valve cover so you get them started get all of them started and uh kind of easily you turn Turn the ratchet three or four turns, just go walk yourself around the entire perimeter of the valve cover, down through the center, get them all good and started, and just keep working your way around three or four turns at a time, and you'll feel it. In most cases, I was able to feel when the rubber gasket or that rubber grommet went down in the valve cover. And uh, nothing felt tight or hard as I was going down, so it wasn't cross threading or it wasn't pinching on the, to one side. Everything went down even. And then I guess they've got a self-stopping feature with those two built-in washers. So once it tightens up and stops, don't keep put pressing your luck. That's tight. This is all you need to do. So that's good. That's on. It's going to reconnect the wiring harness here. And uh, then we're going to put the coil pack in. Okay, let's start it up and uh, see what happens. See if it runs smooth and see if we've got any oil leaks. Sure, but I think we're okay. It's just a rubber boots all it is, and it popped back in. I forgot to mention it in the video, but I just simply slid it through, it twisted, and popped in, and it went into the spark plug, no problem. You can see. So uh, let me cut you off. We're gonna let the car run for a few minutes, and then we'll, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Okay, guys. So while I'm letting the engine run, get some heat in it, checking for leaks, I'm going to put the uh, valve cover gasket I didn't use and the grommets I didn't use back in the box, tape it up, and put it in the trunk of the car, and I'll have it if I need it. Okay, folks, so uh, it's been running for close to 10 minutes now. So definitely get some heat into it. I can feel the heat coming off the engine. Don't see any leaks. Don't smell any leaks. Don't see any smoke. Uh, I think we're good to go. Uh, the engine's still running fine. I think everything's good. So uh, that should conclude that again. This was the easy valve cover on the front right here. And uh, Lord, if you have to put the back one on, I'm going to have to take it to a shop that didn't do that. I, I don't know what the hell. There's probably a trick to making it easier, but it's still going to be a booger, and I'm not going to get into all that. So it ain't leaking right now. Knock on wood. All right, folks, I hope that helps you guys. Like I said, on the Tauruses and the uh, Sables, 3.0 twin cam engine if it's the regular engine the push rod motor this this process won't work or if you're doing the back valve cover uh here's some of the tools i think i've got all the tools i use laid out here uh i use that to kind of pry the spark plugs up with not exactly correct uh eight millimeter and 10 millimeter metric uh sockets screwdriver to kind of help with some of the wiring harness looms had to use, oh yeah, and also to tap up under the valve cover with the uh, rubber mallet and this too. And uh, ratchet and extension bar. That I believe is it, folks, to eight and a 10 millimeter. 
And of course I use the I use the deep deep wall right here. And on that in a short narrow socket, regular socket on the eight. So that's what worked for me. If, if you got one of these generation cars, you should be that should help you. Uh, on my V6 Dodge minivan, the same thing, the front valve cover leaked. The back one didn't. On that engine, you to get to the back one, it was easier to pull that plastic intake off. Uh, Maybe the case on this, I don't know. But I hope I don't have to mess with it. All right, folks, Bob out. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that was helpful. Scroll down and look at some of the other videos we've got. We've got all kinds of content from junkyard crawls to swap meets to some drag racing we do, drag racing events we've attended, stuff we work on here in the shop, just all kinds of automotive content, car shows, personal car collections we're allowed to video, something for everybody on the channel. Scroll down for four years, you can scroll down, hit that like button, watch some of the videos, share some of the videos. We're just regular old guys out here working in a shop behind our house. And uh, we're not like some of these shows you see that had the big budgets. Just regular guys like I hope many of you are showing you can get these things done and we're trying to keep these older cars uh going i think what we're going to do next is brakes i'll probably video that when i put front brakes on it show you guys how to do that so hope that was helpful thank you very much for all the support hit that like button subscribe hit that bell notification Bing! smash that like button as they say and bob out